The U.S. women's soccer president has come out and said that they take in the women's soccer team way less money than they actually uh, cost. And, I've, and you've probably heard this before from me. I've explained it in a video, and I'll link to that in the description, as to how the women actually get paid more proportionately for how much money they, re they generate in revenue. Now, the U.S. soccer president, Carlos Cordero, responded to the lawsuit about a gender pay gap with statements, and he included a fact sheet which said things like this. From 2010 through 2018, U.S. soccer paid her women $34.1 in salaries and game bonuses, and we paid her men 26.4, not counting the significant additional revenue value of various benefits that our women's players receive, but which our men do not. Then, if you scroll further down, from 2009 to 2019, that's 10 years, a time frame that includes two Women's World Cup championships, the national women's team has earned gross revenue of $101.3 million over 238 games for an average of 425 million. 446 per game, while the men's has earned gross revenue of 185 million over 191 games for an average of $972,147 per game. More specifically, women's games have generated a net profit, ticket revenues minus event expenses, in only two years. That means they've generated a net profit in only two years. It's a little bit confusing. 26 and 2017. Across the entire 11 year period, Women's national team games generated a net loss of $27.5 million. And it goes on to say, he goes on to say, it's still a worthy investment to invest in women's soccer. And then a spokesperson for the women's lawsuit says, in reply, the numbers they use are utter utterly false, which, among other things, inappropriately include the women's salaries to inflate the women's players' compensation. Now, excuse me, but how are you inflating it by including how much they actually get paid. Doesn't make sense to me. She adds, any, any apples to apples comparison shows that the men are more, far more than the women. The fact is the women requested the same compensation structure as the men have so they would be paid equally for equal performance. The USSF fact sheet is not a clarification, it's a ruse. Now she's playing word games here and making it sound like she's fighting for women's rights just by the words that she used, but if you pay close attention, given the information that we already know, you can tell that this is not what it's supposed to appear to be. Now, apples to apples comparisons shows that the men earn far more than the women. Okay, the men get more money physically, for comparison's sake, let's say they get two dollars and the women gets one, it's not that. So physically, they get more money, but proportionately, judging by how much revenue they bring in, the men proportionately are paid less. So as a percentage, the men actually earn less than the, than the women. It's like saying you make a company $100,000 and then they pay you $50,000. or in the, But in the men's case, they make the company $200,000 and they get paid $50,000. So proportionally, they make less money. And then when she says they would like to be paid equally for equal performance, meaning the women's national team has performed actually better than the men's, winning two World Cups, and they want to be paid for that performance, well, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You get paid for how much money you bring in. So the WNBA championship team can win 20 championships in a row, but they may not be paid as much as the NBA team, the Golden State Warriors, who won two in a row, because they don't bring in as much money. That's how it works. Now we can pretend to play this game, and we can pretend that the women don't get paid more when it comes to how much money they bring in, but if you want more money, then please just go negotiate it. Leave the public and leave the gender war out of it. Don't blame it on the men. Don't blame it on sexism. Playing pretend that... You want us to play pretend so that you feel better, and it should be insulting to you if that's what you want. You want people to pretend like they like you so that you'll get more money, which is it, which is really weird, and that's why I think there's some people at the top just really convincing a few of them to go in on it, and that's why I maintain my stance that most of these women are probably insulted, and because they're soccer fans, they know that more people, even them probably, watch the men's soccer more than they, more than they get watched. So it's probably pretty insulting to pretend that they make more money and want more money. It makes no sense. So it doesn't help that the women's team actually has had, in my eyes, some pretty unlikable characters. Not just my eyes. I think that's why it doesn't help them. Megan Rapinoe, I think, is pretty unlikable, unless you buy into her whole victim story. And then there's former goalie Hope Solo, 
who drunkenly beat up her nephew and claimed it was a sexist situation because he's a big football player kid in high school, I believe, at the time, and she couldn't possibly do that to him, even though she was drunk and hitting him, and he obviously wasn't going to fight back. So for me, as someone who doesn't really watch anyways, characters like this, who make it all about social justice and gender issues, they're not going to make me tune in. The proper thing to do here is to say, you know, we love your support, we we love we would love to make more money so please come out and support our leagues buy our stuff buy our jerseys buy season tickets now if you're saying we've heard this before haven't I heard Megan Rapinoe say this yes you have she said it I think it was on Colbert or CNN it's one of the two I always get them mixed up because I don't really care about her that much but if you're saying you've heard her say this yes she has but she prefaces it with it's a sexist issue and I hate President Trump so if you're going to do that, you're immediately limiting your audience, and people like me, who probably don't watch anyways, are not going to tune in to watch your, you know, parade of social justice and false equivalencies here. Now compare that to my girls, my Canadian girls soccer team. They're in commercials, they're doing charity things, they're, they're getting uh, broadcasting deals. It happens a lot in hockey the Canadian women end up getting broadcasting positions. So it's a good deal where they can, if they don't make as much money doing the soccer, which they don't, then they get sponsorship deals. They get broadcasting uh, jobs. And none of them are ever like, it's because we are treated poor. It's because this men are sexist and they don't want us to succeed. No, we've had stars, and I know you don't care if you're not in Canada, but we've had women's soccer stars in Canada be faces of organizations and of companies, campaigns, and such and such, because they don't make a stink about it, because they don't call anyone sexist, because they've gen generally, generally, and genuinely been nice people about it. Like, you don't have Kobe Bryant out there just being like, screw everybody, this, is, this was all racist, even though i am got hundreds of millions of dollars, so, I don't know, give me more money. It's about performance, it's about how much people want to watch you. It's getting tiresome having to explain the gender pay gap, which is actually just a wage gap um, of earnings, as we know. See, I'm getting confused just even thinking about it anymore, because we've been over it so many times where we have to explain it. I, what I go by is every three months somebody claims there's unequal pay, even though it's illegal. So as Tim Poole says, get woke, go broke. Thank you, women's soccer team. <laughs>